Welcome back to Studio One and uh, we are talking about Canadian politics and the coming elections of uh, May the 2nd. Uh, one thing interesting about both my guests today, besides that they're both liberals, uh, both of my guests were born outside Canada and moved to Canada at a very young age. And uh, they were both born and lived and grew up in countries and societies which were democratically challenged, as I would say, <laughs> for the lack of a better word. So, so let, me, let me go back here to uh, Yasser. Yasser, Pakistani community would like to know a little bit about yourself. Tell us uh, your story. Well, um, my story. How much time have you got? <laughs> hey. um, I was born in, uh, in Karachi, in, uh, in Pakistan, and came to Canada 22 years ago. December 26, 1988. It was a cold, cold boxing day in, in Toronto that day. I remember distinctly it was minus 16. Not the best time to come uh, here. Not yet. the best time. <laughs> I, in fact, I would argue it was the best time because it okay. really, I love winter. And I think it really just uh, sort of, you get this great sense of what great mm -hmm. country we in. And winter is very right. much part and parcel of that. Uh, my parents are, uh, uh, they live in uh, Oakville. They were uh, uh, both lawyers by training in Pakistan and in, mm -hmm. in Karachi. My father was very much involved in the pro-democracy movement in the 80s uh, when General Zia uh, was, uh, was the dictator. Uh, my father, in fact, was imprisoned for nine months as a political prisoner. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's very much uh, shaped my beliefs and my views about civic engagement, about the importance of democracy. Um, I think one of the very big reasons that my parents decided to move to Canada was they wanted to make sure that their kids grow up in a free country where they have the right uh, to vote, where they have the right to participate in the democratic process, where they can do whatever they want to. Um, so being elected to today from a community like Ottawa a Centre, which is in fact is where the, the seat of government lies for the government of Canada, that's my writing is where Parliament Hill is located, I think is, is a testament to the Canadian society, where what we call home. Uh, where no matter where you're from, uh, you're given equal opportunity. You can do whatever you want to if you work really, really hard. Yeah, I, I remember having read uh, some things about your father's remarks uh, about the cost of Canadian citizenship, that the price he paid for the Canadian citizenship. And worth I every was, single penny. I was Exactly, <laughs> worth every single penny, of course. Uh, aren't we all proud of that? And, and you continue making us proud. Thank you. Uh, all Pakistanis living in Canada. Uh, but let's go back to business here now after the introduction. Uh, I wanted to ask you on the provincial level, 6th of October, election date, what are you doing? Province of Ontario has a deficit. What are we doing to balance the budget? Well, I think this is a very important question. We just uh, are coming out of a great recession, one of the largest recessions since the Great Depression. Uh, 80 years ago. Right. Uh, this was a recession that impacted uh, just not Ontario, just not Canada, but the world. There is no uh, uh, developed uh, industrial country in this world which does, is not running a significant deficit. Why? Because all of us collectively decided that the most important thing we can do to get out of this recession is to invest in our infrastructure to stimulate our economy to create jobs so that we don't get into uh, even a deeper uh, recession. Ontario was very much part of that exercise along mm -hmm. with the government of Canada, which meant borrowing money to invest in a stimulus. The result is, is good. We are out of, getting out of the recession sooner than any other economy. 93% of the jobs that were lost during the recession have been recovered in the province of Ontario. The numbers just came out of for March. Uh, we've had now five consecutive quarters in Ontario where the economy is continuing to grow. The uh, Finance Minister Dwight Duncan just uh, issued his budget uh, a few weeks ago where we've taken a very uh, balanced and prudent approach as to how we're going to balance the books. One thing we're making sure that in order to balance the books, we will not cut essential public services like healthcare and education. Because one mm -hmm. thing our families really rely on is good public education and quality healthcare. public healthcare. Mm -hmm. Just because there's a recession does not mean that our kids will stop going to schools. Just because there's a recession does not mean that our elders will stop getting sick. So we are making a very firm com commitment to Ontarians and moving into the election, we are steadfast about this, that 
we are going to protect vital, crucial, important public services like healthcare and education, like our schools and hospitals. And we'll take our time uh, by, uh, to balance the budget. We're going to ensure that we continue to grow our economy so that we can get good, high paying 21st century jobs in the province for mm -hmm. all Ontarians. Um, we will make sure that we make government more efficient and we are uh, looking at ways, finding ways to make sure that on non-essential uh, public services side of things that we're making government more effective, more efficient so that we can get a bigger bang for a dollar but not at the cost of cutting our schools or hospitals. Right, so Ontarians should be prepared to embrace a 2.7% budget deficit for 2011-2012. Uh, the, the provincial deficit is uh, $16 uh, billion uh, right now, which in, is... In an economy of... In an economy of our, our, uh, our uh, spending uh, on various programs is roughly about $113 billion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So our, our, our GDP to debt ratio is, is right there in the middle. We're in a, in a safe position. And we are actually are able to uh, reduce our deficit uh, at a at a faster uh, pace than what we had projected, uh, so that's that's a good sign. That means our economy is growing at a at a faster pace as well. We were able to draw down our deficit by three billion dollars more than what we had uh, projected. Like I said, ninety three percent of the jobs have been recovered. Eighty six percent of those jobs are full time, good, high paying jobs. Okay. Let me come back to the federal now, 2.7% of deficit acceptable fine on Ontario level and provincial level. On the federal level, yes. the platform of the Liberal Party says that you want to reduce the deficit to 1% of the GDP. Yes. How much time is it going to take and what do you mean for a common Canadian who yes. needs to understand what does this 1% of GDP means in, a, in, a, in an economy of $1.3 trillion, what does it actually mean? Well, we're actually even talking about balancing the budget by 2015. So having zero deficit by 2015, four years from now. And the way we're going to do it is, unlike the Conservatives, we're going to focus our priorities. So the Conservatives right now are focusing $30 billion on buying fighter jets, uh, they want to give corporations an, an additional tax cuts, even though they've already given them enough taxes, uh, tax cuts, and they're going to focus on building mega uh, prisons, uh, thirteen billion dollars on prisons. So you know you t you take these priorities and you think you know that's not really what I think Canadian families need right now. So you take that money and you place it on issues that you think and you know that Canadian family needs, and you take some of it and pay it against put it against the deficit so it's it's a prudent balanced approach that you do not you, you offer relief to canadian families and at the same time you pay the down the deficit as quickly as possible and if you look at history the liberal party is the party that is known for eliminating deficits the conservative party the last time you probably be surprised to hear this the last time a conservative party left the government in canada in a surplus do you know what year that was 1979. No, no, they left it in a, in a deficit then. It was the year the Titanic sank. That was the <laughs> last time a Conservative Party left the government in Canada in deficit. Why do they have to get the government every single time when there's a recession, when there's a bad market, well, when there's a bad economy? Well, actually, so I think you're, you're giving them too much of a benefit of the doubt. I think, it's, I think it, they've proven uh, that they talk a big game, but Fundamentally, conservatives tend to be big spenders, provincially as well. Uh, Bush, George Bush, you look at George Bush, he talks about small government. He ended up with the largest government in history. Uh, Stephen Harper, the largest government in history. So these guys talk a big game about cutting, 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 but they end up being the biggest right. spenders. Give me, give me another example. Mm -hmm. For example, Mike mm -hmm. Harris government, the, conserv the last conservative government yeah. here in Ontario, which was in office from 1995 to 2000. And uh, three, were doing the boom time. They not only cut services drastically, they closed 28 hospitals across the province. We've built 18, by the way. They closed mm -hmm. 28 hospitals, they cut services across the board, they still, and they were, they were governing during the boom time. And they still left almost six billion dollar in deficit and in two thousand eight. And they sold the four hundred seven. <laughs> and they left. And they actually lied. They hit that deficit. It's when 
Premier McGuinty and the Liberal Party came into office and we looked at the books and asked the auditor to look at the book and they found a six, almost six billion dollar deficit. You may recall the big headlines in Globe and Mail and Toronto Star screaming, saying uh, Ontarians were lied to. So, so the, uh, Omar is, is raising a very interesting point that history kind of shows that the Liberal parties are the one who are able to balance the books uh, more in a prudent fashion while enhancing public services which families want so much. I'll tell you why I'm so attracted to the Lib federal liberal platform in this election, uh, which Mr. Ignatiev uh, is proposing along with uh, his members of his team mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. Umar. Yeah. They're talking about things like investing in post-secondary education, right? That's yeah, what families the talk education about, license. right? That's what our, you know, you talk to any Pakistani Canadian family. Why did they come to Canada? They want to make sure their daughters and sons get the best Ninety-five percent. Ninety-five percent of them would say, we came here for the children's education and the better future. Absolutely. Ninety-five percent. So that's why it's important that we have good public education system, we have good public universities. Mr. Ignatiev's and Omar's platform is speaking to that. They're talking about early learning, something we in the Ontario government has been very focused on with the introduction of full-day kindergarten to make sure that our children from the age of four get the full benefit full exposure of the best education quality so that we can compete with the likes of Japan and Singapore and South Korea. By the way, Ontario's education now is top five in the, in the world. Their platform is speaking to that, making sure to work with provinces, to give provinces the resources necessary to allow for early learning, uh, more better subsidized daycare so that the parents are free to then have good jobs and be able to provide the quality of life they want to provide for the family. When, when, when can we get him to come and do some conversing for you? I'm taking him with me after <laughs> this interview. I'm telling, I'm I'm telling you. Him with me. So it's, it's a very interesting conversation, but we've got to cut down to a short break. Uh, continue watching Studio One and uh, we'll be right back.